Ghost is back. That's exactly what Jon Snow just posted on Instagram. So dire wolves who were extinct 10,000 years ago are now back. But how? Let's tell you how. Scientists have brought back dire wolves using ancient DNA over 10,000 years after their extinction. It has been accomplished by the company Colossal Biosciences by Genetic Engineering. So two boys, Remus and Romulus, and one girl, Khaleesi, they're back. The Iron Throne was loaned to Colossal Biosciences by Peter Jackson for this photo shoot. But this is not Westeros. This is real. This is science and this is absolutely historic. It's path-breaking. Species that went extinct 10,000 years back has been brought back using AI, ancient DNA and CRISPR-powered gene editing. So how was Colossal able to pull this off? and why it matters for the future of extinction and how AI is accelerating all of it. Let's tell you. Let's start with the birth of a ghost. The dire wolf is called Inosine Dyrus. It was once the apex predator of the Americas. Bigger, bulkier and a lot stronger than its grey wolf cousin. But it vanished with the Ice Age. But Colossal Biosciences, co-founded by Harvard geneticist George Church and entrepreneur Ben Lang, had a bold vision, a, a once-in-a-generation vision to recode the genome of living grey wolves, make 20 specific edits across 14 genes and then bring back the dire wolf's functional essence. That meant not just, uh, not just the size, the shape, but behaviour as well. That signature howl, the caution, the raw predatory instinct, everything is back now. So what was the tech stack behind the de-extinction? How did they exactly do it? Bringing back the dire wolf wasn't just about mixing uh, ancient DNA with modern wolves. Here's how Colossal did it. Ancient DNA reconstructed. They extracted DNA from two fossils, a 13,000 year old tooth and a 72,000 year old ear bone. I mean, just thinking about this, is giving me goosebumps. They then used proprietary software. Colossal assembled a high coverage genome up to 500 times more complete than any dire wolf sequence ever created. And then happened the AI-powered genome mapping. Their machine learning models scanned through thousands of genetic sequences to identify 20 high-impact variants across 14 genes. The signature edits that made a dire wolf a dire wolf. These included traits like, say, size of the dire wolf, musculature, jaw structure, a much thicker white coat, and then came the vocalization patterns. Yes, even their howl. Another important technology that was used was protein folding meeting evolution. One key target was the LCORL gene, a regulatory of body size in dogs, wolves, even humans. They then used 3D protein modeling. Colossal predicted how specific dire wolf mutations altered the folding of LCORL, especially when it binds to gene silencing complexes like PRC2. That folding change is what gave dire wolves their much bulkier 150-pound build. Then happened the multiplex CRISPR editing. Colossal used CRISPR to make all 20 edits simultaneously. That's quite literally multiplex editing, a kind of precision genome surgery. 15 of these were extinct gene variants never seen in living animals for over 10,000 years. Then happened the non-invasive cloning. Instead of uh, extracting tissue, they drew blood from a grey wolf and harvested EPCs, which are endothelial progenitor cells used in vascular systems. So these edited cells then were cloned using somatic cell nuclear transfer and implanted into healthy surrogate hounds. The result? As you saw, Romulus, Remus and Khaleesi, the world's first de-extincted animals, each with functional traits engineered from ancient coding. So let's make you meet the pack once again. Born by a C-section, bottle fed and raised with round-the-clock care. Romulus, Remus and Khaleesi are the first successful de-extincted mammals of their kind. They live on a secure, secretive 2,000-acre ecological preserve in the States. Their diet, beef, horse, deer, liver and a little puppy chow. Their behaviour, you ask? All wolf. Uh, skittish, observant, so active but at the same time aloof. Not once have they uh, wagged their tails like dogs. These animals know that they are not pets. But you might ask a question, this is AIM TV. So what is the role that AI played in this? Let's tell you. To map out the edits, Colossal leveraged high throughput AI tools from their own spin-off, FormBio. AI then helped accelerate the ancient DNA reconstruction. It helped to identify trait-linked alleles and simulate potential pleiotropic effects. 
when one gene influences multiple traits. AI also helped to predict off-target risks and eliminate harmful mutations. That bit was extremely important. And all of this dramatically shortened the timeline from decades to a matter of months and even reduced embryo loss. But from a grassroots point of view, from a societal point of view, why does this matter? It matters because this is not just about playing God. It's about conservation at scale. Lessons learned from diverse edits are being used to help rescue the endangered red wolf by cloning individuals uh, with more diverse gene lines by breaking the genetic bottleneck. Their woolly mammoth work? It's now produced mice with mammoth traits. So Colossal plans to birth a mammoth elephant hybrid by 2028. That's less than three years. Next, the dodo. Yep. You heard that right. But then it brings us to the ethical questions. Critics are not quiet. Cloning has a painful history, uh, organ defects, large birth sizes, high mortality. So Colossal's approach, less invasive, higher success, zero miscarriages till now. But what happens when you bring a species back into a world where it doesn't belong to, where it has not belonged to for 10,000 years? So what's next? 25 genes edited for the mammoth so far. Goal, embryo implantation by 2026, birth by 2028. Another plan of theirs is a ghost wolf program to rewild hybrid red wolves. Then there's crawl gene editing to resist the invasive cane toad neurotoxin. And there'll be a lot more spin-offs in say pharma, conservatives and plastic degradation via engineered microbes. So you can see Colossal is not just de-extincting animals, it's building the tools to edit life at scale. And that's why it's safe to say that we have crossed a threshold for the first time ever in human history. A 13,000 year old howl now echoes through a modern landscape. Thanks to genetic editing, thanks to AI and human ambition. Species once lost are getting a second chance. But as colossal scientists say, and we are quoting them, we are not restoring the past. We are rewriting the future. What do you feel about this? Is this a moonshot that we need? Or is this a step too far? Drop your thoughts below. And for more real-time science breakdowns, path-breaking breakdowns just like this, subscribe to AIM TV. Think evolution, think AI, think AIM.